Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Mr. Secretary, for being here today. Were you involved in the decision to withdraw troops from Germany? Yes. According to Secretary Esper, 6,400 of those troops, so over half of those who will be removed from Germany, will be coming back to the United States. They're not going to be going to um, parts of Europe to deter Russia, to parts of Asia to deter China. In fact, the only country that has publicly supported the removal of U.S. troops from Germany to date has been Russia. So can you share with us whether uh, the impact of this decision on our efforts to counter China and Russia was taken into account, and um, was there any sort of strategic assessment done to support this decision? Senator Shaheen, thanks uh, for the question. Uh, of course there was, and, and we were very involved at the uh, strategic level. Obviously, uh, the troop level decisions and the like are primarily the Department of Defense and the President's role. Uh, you, you characterized the folks who were coming back to the United States um, as somehow being off the off the field, that's not the case. Uh, these units will participate in rotational activity. They'll be forward deployed. Uh, they won't be stationed or garrisoned. Uh, but make no mistake about it, they will be fully available uh, to ensure that we can properly uh, uh, prosecute the challenges we have from the uh, global powers. Uh, well, Mr. Or, Secretary, or, 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 I, I I assume that all of our troops who are Yes. in the United States are available to be forward deployed. Now, I recognize that there are certain training that needs to be part of them before they are deployed, but, but I guess I, I don't understand and was the effect of diplomatically alienating Germany, who is the largest and wealthiest country in the EU, who has been a historic strategic ally, was that also taken into consideration? Ma'am, you know, this is personal for me. I, I, I fought on the border of East Germany. When I was a young soldier, I was stationed there. Yes, I'm there. aware of that. Yeah. And your unit it, is it, coming was, back to the United I, States. I, I, I know it. It had been back once before to Fort Polk, and then it went back to Germany. Uh, when I was there, there were six figures of soldiers there. Uh, Germany is no longer a frontline state. Uh, as, for, as for our strategic effort, General Secretary Stoltenberg, the NATO commander, uh, was very much in the process of helping us think this through. I saw comments out of Russia this morning that are different than you described that viewed the actions that we took as threatening because we will have uh, soldiers that are deployed closer to the Russian border. Uh, yes, we, we, this was a thoughtful process. Uh, the military piece of this run out of the Pentagon largely, uh, but State Department was fully involved in the strategic pieces of this. And I am very confident that our mission uh, to deter Russia, the NATO mission to deter Russia, we are still fully capable of executing. The, the precise number was 200,000 early, about 100 and some thousand when I was there. Uh, conditions have changed around the world, and our forces need to be repositioned to appropriately confront today's challenges. Well, I, I would just read from a report in Bloomberg that quotes um, Dmitry Peskov, who was the press secretary for uh, Vladimir Putin, who says that, and I quote, the fewer American soldiers on the European continent, the calmer it is in Europe, Peskov said, answering a question on planned U.S. troop reductions in Germany. Um, that doesn't sound to me like they think that this increases the threat from Russia. But I, I'd like to go on to another um, issue because I want to follow up on the question that Secretary Menendez raised, or Senator Menendez raised, about um, the reports on bounties that Russia has put on our troops in Afghanistan by the Taliban. And I, there was a report last night that said that state officials have s secretly warned Russia against bounties on our troops, against killing our troops. What more do you think we should be doing to address that, to prevent uh, the Taliban and Russia from trying to murder our troops in Afghanistan? So... Uh, there, there are many things, and we've been engaged in them consistently. Uh, there's intelligence collection so that if it happens, we can identify it, stop it, make sure that the actual tactical event doesn't take place. Uh, that's the task of not, not only DOD intelligence services, but um, our, our broader intelligence services. Our diplomats, too, make very clear our expectations and set a set of red lines. And then we have our larger Afghanistan policy. It's not just Russia that has been underwriting the Taliban for all these years. I know there's an awful lot of focus on that in this town, um, but let me tell you, at the State Department, Department of Defense, we're worried about Iranian support to the Taliban. 
We're worried about Gulf money coming to the Taliban. We are working. I totally agree with that. We are working diligently against every one of those threats, both diplomatically and from a security perspective, to protect our soldiers. And then finally, to protect our soldiers further, we've been working diplomatically to get peace and reconciliation in Afghanistan. And we have a ceasefire that began at the start of Eid al-Hadha. We've now had a significant prisoner exchange. Since February 29th, the agreement entered into, we haven't had a single attack against an American soldier. This is the finest in American diplomacy, and I'm incredibly proud of what my team has done, my State Department team has done, to protect American soldiers. Um, so do you think it would be helpful for President Trump to talk to Vladimir Putin and tell him that he needs to back off in terms of paying the Taliban to kill American troops? I always leave to the president what he wants to say to other leaders. I don't think there's any doubt in the mind of every Russian leader, including Vladimir Putin, about the expectations of the United States of America not to kill Americans. And I can promise you that the 300 Russians who were in Syria and who, who took action that threatened America, who are no longer on this planet, understand that too. When you were here um, last time, we talked about the potential for negotiations with the Taliban in Afghanistan. That was before an agreement was reached. And there was an exchange that you and I had about the role of Afghan women in any talks with the Taliban. And you said that Afghan women should fend for themselves. Well, we've seen the outcome of our reticence to support Afghan women. The agreement between the US and the Taliban failed to mention the rights of Afghan women, and it contains no guarantees for their continued constitutional protection. Um, is the policy to have Afghan women fend for themselves consistent, do you believe, with the legal mandate for the U.S. to support them, and I quote, the meaningful inclusion of women in peace talks as directed by the Women, Peace, and Security Act that was signed into law by President Trump? Well, I'd have to go look and see what I said. Uh, no, we, we're doing our level best to make sure that we protect every Afghan, male and female, and I have seen the at least tentative composition of the Afghan negotiating team. And uh, I, I think you'll be pleased with it. Um, well, I'm out of time, but the fin for themselves is an exact quote from your statement when you were before this committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Shaheen. <clears throat>